Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Go video. In today's episode, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm completing the Go developer survey for the second half of 2024. Completing the surveys is really important. This has driven most of the changes in the language, like generics or errors, and most recently the iterators. So what you're looking at right now is obviously my screen, but I'm going to be doing this for the first time. I'm going to give you a little bit of commentary about the questions that I'm going to be completing and the reason why I'm choosing the answers that I'm choosing. So let's get this thing started. It says that it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. Hopefully it doesn't take us that long. And if this becomes a really long video, I will just take the most important things in the video and we'll go from there. Okay, so during the past month, in what types of situations have you used Go? Obviously, my primary job, open source projects, of course, if you're watching this video, uh, education, mm, okay, fair enough. And I will potential, well, I've been doing this for about eight years, so it's not uh, something new. How long have you been using Go? Well, eight plus year, give it or take it. So I've been using Go for a while and I've been enjoying it for sure. So what types of things do you build with Go? Uh, data processing, not recently, but I've done this in the past. Embedded devices, Internet of Things. I want to do this. I was actually looking at the Arduino implementation with Tiny Go. I might be doing that in the future. Probably I should be, you know, recording a, vi a few videos about those things. Games, for sure. Never done that before. Runnable Intercode CLI? Not really. API? I, to be fair, I've done that before a lot of times. But the API, RPC services? Yes, I am doing this. Libraries or frameworks? Yes. Proprietary? Of course. Uh, websites, I, I, you know, haven't done too much of HTML recently. Mobile apps, no. desktop and GUI. I did a few things for a video I want to put up soon. So yes, I mean, not not professionally, just for fun. Okay, think about the people who ultimately use the Go software you work on. Okay, as part of their job, business, this is true. As part of their personal family life, consumer, B2C both equally i will say both equally because in some cases uh, i build software that you know you can use for education purposes but also at the same time we build proprietary software at the company i work for they use this uh, directly for sure how many years of professional coding experience do you have oh this is 16 plus years i'm going to reach 20 years of professional experience next year so that's going to be fun what is my employment status i'm happy to be fully employed by a company and organization overall how satisfied this is fine. Have you been with Go during the past year? I'm very satisfied. Uh, it's becoming much more useful. And I, I do think that we are reaching, like I said in the previous video, we're reaching a point where it's most likely there are not that many things you can add without breaking, you know, the backwards compatibility premise that you have. What is your preferred code editor for Go? You know that. Neofim. Uh, how would you describe your familiarity with the following IDEs or code editors? Of course, I know I have heard of Emacs, <laughs> but I never, but never tried it. Golang, uh, IntelliJ, I have used it. Helix, no, no. I uh, use it regularly. VS Code, I, I never, I never tried to use VS Code uh, for Go specifically. Back in the day when I was younger and when I started my career, I, was, I, used, I used to write a lot of C Sharp, believe it or not. And uh, of course, you have to use Visual Code for that. Well, at the time it was in Visual Code, it was, it was Visual Studio.net, if I remember correctly. Which code analysis tool to use for your Go code? Oh, study check, Golang CI, and Go, please. That, those are kind of what I believe everyone is using. I'm not sure what else is out there, but if you know anything please let me know in the comments which operating systems do you use when developing with go hmm, this is interesting because really i use use my mac i've been using mac and you know i know people don't like mac os because of the history and in general apple i think the the, the, the beef is with apple not with the operating system um but i used to use a lot of linux before and that's one of the reasons if you I used to work for a company called Novell that owned SUSE, the German distribution of Linux. And I used to use Linux since I was in college. Okay, which systems do you deploy your Go software to? Linux. There is, there is no there is no other option. I use Docker containers for most of my work. Every, all of them are using Linux. Let's go to the next one. Select all that apply. In the last month, you have used an LLM to assist you in the following when working on never. Okay. At work, to what extent do the following challenges impact your team's current experience using Go? Finding stable and secure Go dependencies? I guess this is important because in some cases, the packages that are on GitHub don't have a way to determine, okay, is this really secure? Was this by, I don't know, is this using a 
dependable or maybe it's using a sneak or some sort of other tool that is checking that there are no security issues on that specific package so it's a minor challenge it's a minor challenge achieving better performance in go programs no i don't think this is a challenge for my team maintaining consistent coding standards of course uh, i th- I think this depends again this depends on the team so i would say this is a minor challenge and this is more or less like you you are enforcing interest or maybe there is some sort of a style guide that you you are telling your team to follow so yeah i would say this is a minor challenge identifying which of our projects dependencies have known security vulnerabilities not at all this is not relevant to my team we use depend about keeping go dependencies similar situation depend about identifying performance issues in a running go program no we use open telemetry new relic and datadog in some cases so this is not relevant to my team find the bugs and vulnerabilities that result from expected user input again this could be an issue depending i mean you can use fuzzing if you're not familiar with the go standard library provides a way to implement tests that fuzz your input so you can find those issues right away so i guess this is not a challenge for my team right now avoiding the version conflicts in go dependencies mm, i don't think so i don't think this is an issue identifying resource usage inefficiencies in a running go program this is interesting and again it goes back to whatever you know application performance monitoring tool you're using open telemetry and so on and so forth so i guess this is not relevant if you don't have those of course you're going to be having issues identifying uh, the resource usage Identifying security vulnerabilities in our own Go code. Now we use Go Volden Check as well as uh, Sneak and, and those um, tools available. Uh, so this is not a challenge. Can you tell us more about what makes you challenging? No, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You kind of see the answers and that's pretty much it. Let's say you could make a wish and solve one of the challenges. Which which will benefit your team the most to solve? Finding a stable and secure to go dependencies. Maintaining consistent coding standards. I think I would say finding a stable and secure code dependencies. Maintaining consistent coding standards across your code code. Your Go code base can be enforced by using linters. And also a consistent uh, style guide that you can share with your teams and follow the PR process and go for it. Would it be nice to have some sort of equivalent to GoFomp for coding standards? Eh, that would be nice. I mean, I, I wouldn't say no to that. So which of the following best practices describes your best use of vulnerability scanning in Go? Uh, I don't use, I manually run, I have automated, yeah, I have automated vulnerability scanning integrated into my pipeline. Again, GoFundMe and Chuck or a Sneak or those kind of things are, you know, part of your, or also depend about, so those are part of our CI/CD pipeline. Do you use any of the following tools to help maintain security in your Go projects? Check marks. I heard of this. Um, is this Ment? I think it used to be called Ment. But no, I don't use that. Govel- well, I used to use, if it's Ment, I, w- I, w- I will select a Sneak. I used to use for uh, my open source projects. Sonar Cube also. How familiar are you with the Go vulnerability? Oh, of course. I use it regularly and you can check out the open source projects that I have and, and the configuration that I have if you want to use it. Overall, how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with uh, GovLens in last year? You know, there are some cases somehow satisfied. The reason being is that in some cases, GovLens check fails because the, um, like the database fails depending on the version. So it fails because the version of govolnen check is not updated so it's sort of like a egg chicken situation from what i saw last time probably solve uh, but i still recommend it so somehow satisfy okay let's go into the next one we are almost done how often do you work on projects where performance optimization are crucial i would say about half of the time um but it it depends on the on the on the, on the project um so half and half how familiar are you with the concept of uh zim zimd Probably mispronouncing this. Do, you know, this is an interesting. I'm not familiar at all. I I think I read this before. I'm probably actually investigate more about this, but not familiar at all. Um, let's go to the next one. Which of the following best describes the industry in which your organization operates? Uh, education, energy, financial service, healthcare, media, gaming, mm, public sector, retail, technology, telecommunication. I, I would say media, but not gaming. Uh, in which location do you live? Well, I live in the beautiful United States of America. Next. If you could add one more, one tool to the Go ecosystem from another language, what would it be? Ooh, this is nice. Um, I will have to think about it and I, I just don't want you to be here for 10 minutes. So I don't know, I would put, I don't know. Can you tell us more about why you would like to use that tool? Well, I can't because I don't know what tool I can use. Is there anything you would like to share with us about Go? Yes, keep it up. You are doing a great job. Submit. 
And that's it. I just completed the God Developer Survey for the second half of 2024. They have used this data in the past to make some decisions, whether you like those decisions or not. It's important that we share what we like. It's sort of like voting. So, you know, why not? So, and again, probably this doesn't match with what the options they, that you're choosing during the survey, but I still I encourage you to complete the survey. By the time you see this video, I will put it up on September 16th. You have one week to complete it because the survey will close on September 23rd, 2024. So you have about seven days from now and then. Please complete it whenever you have some time. 10 to 15 minutes, I was told, but I think it's more than that. And again, thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Take care. Stay safe. See you.